Thank you, everyone, and good morning. Thank you for this chance to join. So I bring you all greetings from Singapore, and I hope you're all well during these uncertain times. Let me start with my observations, I think from Croatia's observations around the impact of COVID on the food and agriculture supply chains. And then I will look at some of the things that we are doing. So I'll split it into two parts. So on this first slide, certainly the pandemic has not spared the family farmers, and Chris has definitely highlighted the impact on farmers and the co-ops. There's also quite a number of surveys that's being done. So this is an example that has been done by the Global Alliance for Improved Nutrition. And the same takeaways uh, is present as to what Chris pointed out, decreased sales by the businesses and farmers. And this means that they have less cash to pay their employees, their suppliers, or they can't pay for raw materials, which also meant decreased or stopped production. Again, in contributing to the negative impact up and down the supply chain. And then because of the logistics problem, especially on a cross-border basis, there's a lot more interest in sourcing from local suppliers. And then on the consumer side, there is increased demand for fresh products, especially for people who are locked down at home, you know, they tend to cook more, so more fruits and vegetables, exactly the produce that Chris has pointed out. And there's also, as a marketing channel, we have seen a lot more increased interest in e-commerce and internet marketing. So in Singapore, for example, you know, Lazada or Red Mart, some of the e-groceries and e-deliveries, a lot of that has picked up because people are at home, they don't want to go out, they're ordering a lot of their food in, especially to cook at home. And then Chris has already talked a little bit about what are the impact on the farmers. What we have shown also, I guess, regionally outside Philippines is, yes, there was difficulty in selling their produce. And this creates that liquidity problem that I talked about, both in terms of, you know, their ongoing household expenses and loan payments, but also getting access to seeds and fertilizers for their next planting season. And this is another survey now for the business. What is the what are the private sector thinking about the implications for the future? I wanted to say that many of the trends that you see here, such as the changing consumption patterns, focus on food safety, this intermediation in the supply chain that brings the producer closer to the end consumer, all of these were already underway even before COVID-19. And COVID really just accelerated these changes. From our regional perspective, I think demand will come back, but there will be new characteristics, diversification of suppliers and consumers so that there's less risk from a geographic concentration. And from the farmer side, you know, it's important that you have a diverse end market to sell your end products, right? Both domestic markets, maybe in the community, but also to other urban centers or even to the export markets. The second observation is the importance of digital technologies to help solve some of these problems around logistics, connecting the buyers and sellers, such as your digital marketplace, and facilitating trade and payments. And here I'm going to talk about the second part of my presentation about what we did in Grow Asia. We convened a roundtable in May this year, and initially six areas were identified. We've eventually narrowed it down to four. Four working groups around logistics, mobile money, marketing, and enabling environment or the digital policy. As of now, we have a draft report that's being finalized for submission to the ASEAN Secretariat with the aim of ultimately getting an action plan with roles and responsibilities adopted. And what I'm presenting here is a summary of the ideas that is being covered by this report. Certainly, there are short-term solutions that can be done in response to COVID, but how can we protect the supply chains against future pandemics and other unforeseen events in the long term. So in logistics, for example, what Grab has done in Southeast Asian cities, organizing transport, right? Can we bring that same solution to rural logistics so that you consolidate the backloads, you fill up the trucks that might otherwise return empty or work with people who have idle vehicles but are looking for other source of income? On the cash flow side, is there an opportunity to increase the financial access by promoting e-wallets and mobile money? And in our conversation with donors, through this same channel, can we distribute e-vouchers, you know, so that this transfers credit also to farmers to buy inputs for the next season? And this is my final slide to just share with you what's happening in two other countries in Croatia. So in Cambodia, a consortium of some of the mobile money operators worked with the government 
to transfer payments for those that have been unemployed because of the pandemic. And now we're working with the World Bank to use that same system to transfer e-vouchers. And that is also being discussed in Myanmar to deliver these e-vouchers to be complemented by e-digital extension services as well. So farmers receiving advice on their smartphones. That's a very quick share from my side. Happy to talk further during our sharing. Matuhay ang pamilyang magsasaka